Let's turn our attention to the Health Check Monitor and Network Policy Service in Windows Server 2012. So in order to install this, there's a few different things that we have to uh, prepare to get started. So first thing we want to do is we want to install Certificate Services. Now if you're doing the DHCP type of uh, health check policy, you don't need to do this, but we're going to do the IPsec one because that, that one is more effective. DHCP can be defeated just by simply having a static IP address on your computer, so that's kind of useless. So let's use the health check uh, policy in order to block people that don't have several things up to date. And let's go ahead and start by clicking on Active Directory Certificate Services and click Next. And any additional features it, it prompts you for, just go ahead and do that. All right, so as far as what things we're going to install with it, it's just going to be the certification authority. That's it. And let's go ahead and click install. And that usually takes a few minutes. All right, now that that's installed, let's go ahead and click the button that says configure Active Directory Certificate Services. And we'll go through the wizard. Certification authority, we definitely want to have that checked. All right, let's click Next. And we could do an Enterprise uh, Certification Authority, but in this case, we're just going to do the standalone. Um, it can be members of a work group or the domain. Uh, standalone CAs do not require Active Directory DS and can be used without a network connection. So the only reason we're doing this with the standard standalone one is because it's a little bit simpler to configure, but you can certainly do the Enterprise one uh, if you want to only uh, affect domain members. So this is a root certification authority, so that's fine. And we're going to create a new private key. And let's just go ahead with the defaults. Uh, 2048 is plenty. And this is just the, the name. This, the server is already a domain controller, so this is the name of the server, and it's the name of the uh, domain, etc. And you can check any amount of years you want. Um, I personally like to go with 20 years. I just don't want to have to keep doing this. It'd be amazing. It's amazing how fast uh, five years creeps up on you. So let's go ahead and click Next and Configure. And it says it's all done after a couple of minutes. And now we're going to close. All right, the next thing we're going to install is our network policy server. So network policy and access services. Go ahead and click that. Add the features as needed. Next. Let's leave all this as the defaults. Next. Next. All right, so here's where we want to make one change. We want to go ahead and check the box for health registration authority. Next. Now let's go ahead and choose to use the local certificate authority that we just created to issue certificates. Do you want to require that users be authenticated? Yes, we do. And we'll go ahead and click install. All right, looks like it's finished. We'll go ahead and click close. So we're all set. So we've got a couple of new things that have come up uh, since we installed all that, that good stuff there. We've got the certification authority, which you can certainly click on just to see uh, that it's showing green and that uh, you know, there's really nothing that, that you need to do here. It's just it created its first certificate on its own. Uh, another thing that it created was the health registration authority. Again, nothing really to configure here. It just sort of shows that uh, there is uh, an installation here that was done. And you can just go ahead and it, you know, it shows the DC01, which is good. We can go ahead and close that. So the thing we need to do is to go and configure the network policy server. So let's expand that. And there's this great uh, wizard that you can use. So you don't have to figure out all the different things that you want to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you can click the drop down list here where it says network policy and there's a, a few different options here so there's a radius uh, way of doing this so if you're using this for VPN connections say to uh, a Cisco uh, firewall or something like that but in our case uh, we're going to be using this directly on the server itself that will affect everybody who connects to it, it doesn't matter if they're internal or external so let's configure NAP click the wizard 
and we'll hit the drop down. Now we have several options here as well. So uh, we want to choose the IPsec with Health Registration Authority. This is the one that is the most secure. It's going to create a, an encryption between the two and it's going to force the client to accept a certificate uh, in order to check uh, if it is who, we, if the computer is who it says it is and the user is who they say they are uh, and also to encrypt the stream of data between the two. So let's go ahead and leave the defaults that you see there. It's just creating a policy name is all, which is fine. Now we don't have any radius clients because we're not using radius in this particular thing. Uh, machine groups, if you wanted to, you can add a group with computers in it. If you don't add a group, it will just affect all computers, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now we've got, uh, by default, it's going to pick the Windows Security Health Validator, which is on the server. If you didn't pre-install the certificate services, you wouldn't see this option, and this whole thing would fail. So we definitely want to do that. Uh, you also have the option to auto-remediate uh, client computers. We don't want to do that because we want to see the client computers fail uh, just to confirm that it's working properly. If you leave this on, what it'll try to do is it will try to automatically uh, do things to make the uh, PCs Compliance, such as turn on the firewall, turn on the antivirus, uh, you know, all the things, uh, turn on Windows updates and run the updates. And again, that's a great thing in a production environment, but for our test environment, we want to just, uh, you know, see that it's going to fail to confirm that it's working. All right, we'll go ahead and click finish. Now, if we expand several things here, you'll see what it is that we just did. So the first thing we did was it created these NAT policies. It created a policy uh, for compliance and it created a policy for non-compliance. So basically, if the computer is compliant, it's going to pass the traffic. If it's not compliant, it won't pass the traffic. So you had to create two of these policies and the wizard automatically did that for us, which is great. Now under health policies, it did the same thing. So we have IPsec with HRA compliant and with non-compliant. Uh, so let's go ahead and move down the line here and we can see the last thing it created, uh, which is the default configuration. Now the wizard didn't create this. This got created when the, uh, the uh, network policy server was checked in server manager and this was installed. This automatically creates a default configuration. And you can um, create a, 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 a second one, a third one, or whatever it is you want. But in this particular case, uh, the default one is just fine. So what it's going to check is if the firewall is, is enabled, if there's an antivirus, and it doesn't have to be Windows antivirus, just one that works with Windows. Is the antivirus up to date? Is the anti-spyware up to date? And then Windows Defender is fine for that. Uh, automatic updating is turned on for Windows. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, if these things aren't uh, up to date, then we're going to go, uh, for, as far as uh, update, uh, Windows updates goes, we're going to restrict access to the client. And we're going to say we want all the updates done, and we want everything updated within the last hour. Now, that may not be uh, realistic in your environment, but this, again, is just a test environment, so you can change that if you want. Uh, you can also check the box for Windows Server Update Services in case you have a uh, SUS server on your network, which we do not. So let's go ahead and click OK. All right, we are all done with the policy, but now we have to go to the next step, which is group policy. So we have to get group policy to turn on some things. Now, I've already pre-configured these group policies, but we're just going to go through them uh, just so you can see the changes that I made. So let's go ahead and open up group policy editor, or group policy management, I should say. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a new group policy. And like I said earlier, I've already created it. I'm going to show you the changes that I made. So what you want to do is right click on widget LLC internal or your domain name and click create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So um, you're going to call it lockdown users. So let's right click on it and choose edit. And let's expand. All right. So we're going to make three changes to this group policy. First one we're going to do is we're going to expand computer configuration and then policies and then we're going to go to administrative templates and windows components administrative templates and windows components all right if i'm going too fast just go ahead and pause things until you get caught up next we're going to go down to security center so it's all alphabetical so just go ahead and get there and then we're going to have the option here to turn on Security Center. So double click on that and choose Enable. By default, it's set to Not Configured. Okay, 
let's go to change number two. And again, computer configuration, policies, but this time we're going to go to Windows settings. And then security settings. And then system services. All right, this shows all of the services that are going to be on a computer. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to go to Network Access Protection Agent, which is installed on all Windows 7 and newer computers. And we're going to define the policy by checking the box and then clicking Automatic and then click OK. So what this does is it will automatically turn on the Network Access Protection and it will keep, the, keep them from turning it back off. All right, the last change we need to do is to go down a few more folders to where it says Network Access Protection. And we're going to expand NAP Client Configuration. And we're going to expand Enforcement Clients. There we go. And then we're going to go to the DHCP Quarantine Enforcement Client. And we're going to enable that. Now, the only reason why you would not want to enable this is if you um, don't feel the need to quarantine users. We're not going to quarantine users in this particular uh, lab video, but uh, what that does is it allows you to send people off to another subnet where they can't have access to your main servers. And it allows them to be quarantined until they get compliant. So we'll go ahead and enable it, even though we're not going to go any farther with it in this particular uh, exercise. So we can go ahead and close that all down because that's the only changes we need to make. Now we're going to go to Tools and DHCP. And we've got our server. We've got DHCP already installed. If you uh, don't see the green light on there or for some reason it's, it got uninstalled somehow, just go back to uh, the server roles and add it back in. All right, so uh, we're going to right click on our server and go to properties. And, oh, pardon me, we're going to go down one step from that. Uh, IP version 4 and go to properties. And we're going to go to network access protection. And we're going to check the box that says enable on all scopes. DHCP server behavior when network uh, is unreachable, we can just go ahead and leave it at full access. In our case, it's going to be reachable. But if you wanted to, you could drop the client or restrict access, whatever it is that you want. In our case, we're going to leave it at, as it is. All right, now we are in our client computer, and we're going to make sure this computer is as non-compliant as possible. We're going to go to our Windows firewall, and we're going to make sure it's turned off. All right, let's go back to our control panel items. We're going to go to Windows Defender. And we're going to change Windows Defender. We're just going to turn it off as well. So turn on real-time protection is now off. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and close that. And we're going to go to our Windows Updates. And also make sure that that is turned off. You can click on Change Settings and just change it to never check. So this is as non-compliant as it could be. So let's go ahead and restart it and let's see if we're able to still access the network. Alright, we're rebooted. Let's go ahead and log back in. Now the reason it's letting us in of course is because our credentials are cached. If you had never logged in with this domain user then you would not even get this far. So let's go ahead and open up Windows Explorer. And let's open up a command prompt and do an IP config. And we can see we now have a 169 address. So it hasn't even given us an IP address on our subnet. And just for fun, we can just put in our server name, hit enter, and you can see it's just never going to get access to that server, especially with having an automatic private IP address or not on the 192.168 network even. So uh, after about uh, 30 seconds or so, you're going to get a pop-up that says uh, cannot access the network. Now let's go back to our DCO1 
and let's just go to event viewer in the windows logs and the security tab so we go there and you can see all these audit failures and if you read it it says the network policy server has denied access to this user computer name client so look at that it worked